I mean, we're 100 days to the Olympics, less than 100 days. Yeah. You guys must be getting pretty pumped. Yeah, it's, um, it's hard to believe it's so close, but there's still so much work to do. What goes in in the last like three to three and a half months of training and preparing, I assume? The training is just like you jack that up a hundredfold. <laughs> yeah, we try to leave no stone unturned. Um, just, you know, I've been training hard for the last eight years, and so I'm going to continue training on that cycle and stay healthy and be in the best shape of my life on August 18th. Um, doing a lot of match analysis and some technical breakdown, so just really sharpening all the tools in the shed. People are making a really big deal right now about Rio saying, oh, it's not ready. Kind of the same stuff we heard in the last Olympics, yeah. probably, and Zika and uh, gang violence and uh, Brazil, political corruption, yeah. everything. <laughs> How much of that, like a little bit of that has to, I guess, go through your head and say like, all right, like they got some yeah. stuff to figure out before I get down there. Yeah, for sure. We went to Brazil in January actually for the Rio test event. And so we competed in the venue right next to our venue. And uh, our venue wasn't completely ready yet. We competed in the basketball venue actually, and it looked amazing. The volunteers were so awesome, so helpful and so friendly, and just they wanted to be part of the games and they were already feeling the Olympic energy. So I'm just really excited to be there. Does Zika factor in and anything like that when you think about what you're getting into this summer? Yeah, um, you know, everywhere we travel, there's there's issues with health and you know water quality, and everywhere in the world, um, there's things you need to be in mind as a traveler. And we're used to dealing with a lot of those things. So in terms of Zika, I mean, we'll be competing in Brazil's winter. So it's not quite like a Canadian winter, but uh, the mosquitoes will be less of an issue then. And uh, luckily I compete inside, so. So it, it, I'm trying to figure out how I can wear this properly. It's a little bit of a concern, but you know the precautions and stuff you have to do to make yeah. sure that you're not, say, for lack of a better way to phrase this, a statistic. Yeah, exactly. And I. And I, I have full confidence in how the Canadian Olympic Committee is going to take care of the athletes and the IOC does an amazing job ensuring the safety of the athletes and the safety of everyone who's taking part in the Olympic Games. I actually went to Sochi as a volunteer and uh, I don't know if you guys remember, two years ago the terrorism threats and all of the kind of, there were so many controversies around Russia at the time and I was really scared to go to Sochi um, as just a, as a, a a supporter and a volunteer mm -hmm. um, but I got on the plane and, and I was nervous but when I landed in Sochi it was this really protective bubble this this exciting energy um, the Olympic Games really transforms the city where it's in and I've no con I have no worries that Rio will be the same yeah I mean there's concerns in the onset but they do enough to distract you protect you and tell you Every, like yeah. they do enough to eliminate those concerns that you're able to focus. Sounds like you're able to focus on your sport. Yeah, hundred percent. We're there to get a job done, and uh, there's always going to be distractions. It's the Olympics. It's crazy, um, but you know, like I said, we're there on business, and so I'm just excited to get the job done. Wow. Um, any message, I guess, to your Canadian fans? I mean, how many wrestling medals are we going to take home? <laughs> we have six girls qualified, and so. We're going to be metal threats on all of them, so stay, stay tuned. <laughs>